In the season of horrors and frights, it appears that this individual won this week's treat. Don't forget to leave a comment in the video to be entered to win a raffle, of which, if you win, you can pick a game below. Now on with the presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Guillotine. In celebration of this All Hallows' Eve, I thought I'd tell you a tale. It began one evening. A man of the cloth had been called. Dispatched under mysterious circumstances, he was informed prior to his departure about possible reports of demons, malevolent spirits, or other not very nice things. Upon his arrival to the apartment in question, he could sense that something was not quite right. The priest knew little of what to expect. The only information he was given was that the individual who had called for help before disappearing was a gamer, unbeknownst to the priest. They came from the bargain bin. <laughs> Determined to ensure the job was done right, and predecessors would be able to follow the necessary steps, he wrote down his discoveries. They loosely detailed the following. After some brief searching, the priest found some entities emanating weak energy. In order to find if these were indeed the sources of what was happening, the priest would have to play the games and find out if they were truly malicious or simply misunderstood. He started with a title called Greek Memories of Azur. Purchased new for two dollars and fifty cents. Upon starting, we're presented with a childlike creature with a charming art style. You're quickly given a tutorial where you learn how to control multiple characters, perform platforming, combat, and soon you are thrown into a fantasy Metroidvania adventure. After a couple of hours of experience, though, the priest could find no ill intent. The game, while not spectacular in any particular detail, was well made, charming in its visual style, and satisfying in movement. The combat had a bit of a steep learning curve, but all in all, it was surprising how much the priest was unable to find anything worthy of exorcism. Still anxious to purge the apartment of evil, and still able to sense ill intent emanating from somewhere, he continued his search. He found a much more palpable spirit not far from where Greek was shelved. Hard to detect before, but seemingly awakened by the priest's prolonged investigation. This time, it took the form of Beast Quest. Purchased new for five dollars. Upon booting up, he found that this was a beast that gave an appearance of something much older. Almost archaic by present-day standards. Nothing dangerous or offensive in and of that. But then the characters began to speak. I believe that hero is you. Um, uh... Tom. Oh, uh, Tom. <laughs> right. This was hilarious! The animation! The voices! No, no, I have nothing against Robins. <laughs> Some of my best friends are Robins. It was laughable! The priest was almost beside himself, wondering how he could have possibly mistaken for a sinister spirit. But then, the gameplay started. During and after the tutorial phase, he quickly learned that the game intended to lull its unsuspecting victims into a trance of stupor. Lacking any significant engagement, it started to feed off of its target. An introduction of mechanics that would fool some into thinking they had more need to strategize than was truly necessary. Those with weaker constitutions or lacking mental fortitude could theoretically have their life forces drained by such a title. But those that were aware and caught it early could save themselves easily. The priest was in this latter category. About to conclude his investigation and thinking that he'd found the offender, he banished Beast Quest back to its container and was about to consider his job concluded. But then, 
he felt something new. He couldn't quite tell what to make of it. It was demonic, to be sure, but it was not the kind he was familiar with. Almost like it came from another part of the world. And then he saw it. At first glance, it was innocuous enough. A casual observer would see it as nothing more than an NES classic, a device that was now fairly collectible and regularly went for over a hundred dollars, but this one was... off. Malformed. Authentic at a distance, but quickly showing faults and issues upon scrutiny. Searching around, he found some packaging, a damaged box, 620 games, and a price tag. Twenty-five dollars. Before playing, he gave it a further examination. The technology was... ancient. Some in the modern era were no longer familiar with how to manage it. This was no bargain. This was cost-cutting. Hesitantly, he started up the console. Immediately, he felt a light pain in his eyes. He was presented with many games, to be sure but their presentation was clearly not how they were originally intended. He saw familiar names, but the details were wrong. The first clue came in Contra 6. Elements were readable, but there were other pieces in languages he did not understand. The gameplay was mostly right. However, there was just the ever-so-slight loss of clarity and precision in the video feed. Moving on. He then looked for and quickly found a bastion and safe haven that would quickly offer some insight in the background of this device. Mario. But what he found was not Mario. He had been perverted, mutated, deviant, driven from his original form. He no longer had the same charm. He was drenched in the uncanny. Again, everything seemingly worked, but none of it was right. Looking at some of the paperwork that came with the device, he found that one of the adverts was a lie. 620 games? More likely closer to 5 or 400. Some entities repeated themselves multiple times on the list. In the final update that was written, he had begun to investigate a title called Chippendale 3. But this was the worst perversion of them all. The adorable woodland creatures now were set in a modern war zone. Fighting anthropomorphized guerrilla warfare. The final update from the priest reads as such. After spending enough time with this insidious device, I can only conclude that this is a demonic possession, manifesting the raw sins of sloth, gluttony, and greed. Uncaring for what came before it, and willing to adopt whatever it can for as little as it can get away with. Details indicate this formed in the Far East, and was brought here by those with little care. Unfortunately, beyond this, what happened to the priest after that is unknown. There were no more updates, and his body was never found.